tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It is a brand new season as we welcome you to fall. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is Wednesday, September 23rd, as Bill mentioned, the first day of fall. Here we go into autumn, and now at 6 a.m., a high school senior has died weeks after five friends were involved in a Labor Day crash. We've got new details about a man accused in a Lexington shooting just days after investigators say he tried to kill two people by setting a home on fire. And some repairs are needed after a car damaged a Lexington gas station. Hey, we're looking outside seeing fantastic temperatures in some locations. Other locations, a little bit on the cool side, but 60 degrees now at Jackson in southeastern Kentucky. There you go, a pleasant day in store. Lower 80s expected. It's getting a little bit warmer. It typically means a little rain. I'll show you when you can expect that coming up. Thank you. Let's get to the news on WKYT. Grief counselors will be at a Kentucky high school today. We've learned that a Lincoln County teenager injured weeks ago in a crash has died. Ricardo Nunez and several friends crashed in Tennessee on Labor Day. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at Lincoln County High School with more details. Good morning, Rebecca. Lincoln County school leaders are calling this a deeply sad and difficult time. One of their seniors, 18 year old Ricardo Nunez, died yesterday afternoon after being injured in a car crash that happened about two and a half weeks ago. Now, the school is saying that Nunez was not able to recover from his injuries after a car he was in flipped in Knoxville on September 7th. Police say that the Labor Day crash happened on I 640 when a Toyota Camry ran off the road and hit a pole. The car flipped several times, throwing three teenagers from the car. Officers tell us that one of them was Nunez. The school is now asking people in the community to pray for his family and friends. They are bringing in a crisis response team to the high school today, so those that knew the senior will have the support that they need, as well as grief counseling. Now, this morning, we are learning that the 18 year old senior played football here at the high school. Coming up on WKYT News at 6.30, we are going to take a closer look at how other athletes and many other people in the community here have been showing support for Nunez's family. Now, I can tell you, I've been looking through Facebook and seeing the outpouring of support. It's very heartwarming, and we're looking forward to showing you how the community is rallying around this family in a half hour. Live in Lincoln County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Breaking news from overnight. New York Yankees Hall of Fame catcher Yogi Berra has died. Berra was a catcher for the Yankees for 19 years, and he won the Most Valuable Player Award for the American League three times. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1972. Yogi Berra passed away in New Jersey at the age of 90. It's said to be due to natural causes. Also new this morning, repairs are needed at a Lexington gas station after a car slammed into the building. Happened last night at the Shell station at Newtown and New Circle. Police say a child put the car in gear when the parent got out. The car then rolled into the building, shattering a glass window. That Shell gas station is open this morning. Well, we are learning more this morning about a man suspected of committing two violent crimes in just a matter of days. Lexington police arrested Adam Duff yesterday. They say he set a house on fire last week and then shot a man during a weekend robbery. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain live in Lexington now, where Duff is set to face a judge later today. Michelle? Yeah, Adam Duff will be in court today on several charges, including arson, robbery, and attempt of murder. Now, that robbery charge stems from an incident this past Sunday. According to court documents, Duff shot and robbed a man on Warfield Place during a poker game. Police say Duff was at the home for a drug deal. The victim was shot in the leg, and police say Duff stole money from his wallet. Now, this robbery happened two days after Duff was accused of setting a home on Leastown Road on fire. Court documents say that Duff knew Stephanie Keene, the caregiver of Clarence Woodrum, who owns the home. Documents say that Keene and Duff were arguing when she ran upstairs and locked herself in a bedroom with wheelchair bound Woodrum. Duff tried to kick the door down before yelling that he was going to set the house on fire. A few moments later, he did just that. Keene says that she jumped from the balcony and waved down several people who were able to help Woodrum escape his burning home. Woodrum is still in shock over the entire situation. I couldn't believe that he said something like that. You know, I thought, you know, just he's shooting his mouth off or something because I told him he had to leave the house and have to, and I said, just go on, get away from the house, get out of the yard and everything. And he said some cuss words and said, well, if I have to leave, I'll burn you up. I'll kill you. 
Woodrum's home was destroyed in the fire. He's currently staying in a motel. As for Duff, he is charged with attempted murder in the arson case as well as wanton endangerment as a firefighter was sent to the hospital from injuries sustained during efforts to put out the fire. Now, we've also learned that Adam Duff was on parole when he was arrested yesterday. He was convicted of robbing a bank back in 2009. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, a lot of uh, drama in that story. Thank you very much. 6.05 now on WKYT This Morning. A man is in jail accused of stealing several hemp plants. Danville police arrested Timothy Preston. They were called to the Walmart parking lot for a report of two men selling marijuana out of a truck. Police say the plants were stolen from a legal hemp growing operation on private property. Preston is facing several charges, including receiving stolen property. And police say the other man was not involved in the theft. A grand jury will decide what happens next to a Laurel County man accused of killing his estranged girlfriend. Joseph Nestor is charged in the murder of Amber Decker. Her body was found in the woods near her burned down home on the Laurel Clay County line. Ashland Incorporated plans to spin off its Valvoline oil unit. Business Lexington reports the move will create two separate publicly traded companies. The separation plan is expected to be complete in a year. Ashland is based in Covington. Valvoline has been in Lexington for more than 30 years. Well, the two women hoping to be Kentucky's next lieutenant governor will be squaring off tonight in their first televised debate. Major party candidate State Representative Sandy Overly is running alongside Democrat Jack Conway. Military veteran Janine Hampton is the Republican Matt Bevins running mate. That debate will be hosted by WKYT, WLKY, and the League of Women Voters. You can watch a live stream of the debate tonight at 7 o'clock on WKYT.com. And you can also catch an encore presentation on television tonight that will be at 10 o'clock on the CW Lexington. Again, 10 o'clock tonight on the CW Lexington for the Lieutenant Governor debate. I'm looking forward to being there at Midway University. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. Clear skies across the region typically leads to at least some patchy fog, and that's obvious across the region over in the south and southeast. There's live sky camera, and things look pretty good. Now, current temperature wise, look at these. We're starting to get some warmer air streaming on in here. That kicked in last night and early this morning, and temperatures aren't really dropping. We've actually had a couple of spots rise from last night and into early this morning. So that's when you know some warmer air is on the way. Temperatures in the 50s. And remember this, Danville, you finished off in the mid-40s yesterday morning, upper 40s across bluegrass for most, and we're sitting there in the 50s, and even some 60-degree readings. That's pretty mild down toward the southeast. Going throughout the day, we're at 81 degrees later on this afternoon, so it's getting a little bit warmer today and tomorrow as that warm air now creeps on in here. A lot of sunshine to be had. It's a beautiful day for the first day of fall, and it's uh, roughly around fall weather. Uh, this is just a little bit higher. Then where we typically are, mid to upper 70s. Pleasant first day of fall. We we'll go throughout the day. Average temperatures uh, will be above that the next couple of days. That's when we start to feel that warm air creep on in. But then we look towards your weekend. And I say toward your weekend, not just your weekend. Friday, Saturday looks like the better opportunity to actually see a little rain in the forecast. Remember, no washout. Don't cancel any plans. And don't bet on picking up tremendous amounts of rain. You're not going to get that. It's more of just some pesky light showers outside. Casey County Apple Festival going on, kicking off tomorrow along with the World Chicken Festival. Both of those kicking off and looking pretty good, too. And uh, it looks like as we go off into Friday, now you will have a few chances of rain. I believe the World Chicken Festival will have a little bit better opportunity than, say, Liberty there in Casey County. So just keep in mind, the farther east and southeast you are, Better likelihood of actually seeing a couple of passing showers. That's about it. So, no washout to be had. Anytime Plenty soon. of sunshine. Thank you. Each morning we bring you weather and traffic. Here's Officer Don right now with a look at what's happening out on the roads. Hey, good morning. Report of a non injury collision at uh, this one's going to be on South Broadway at Waller. No one's hurt in that wreck, like I said, but you should see maybe one lane blocked for the next few minutes there on South Broadway. Let's get a look at uh, what's happening as you head out the door this morning with light traffic around the city. No major issues to deal with at the moment. Uh, getting a live look there at Harrodsburg and New Circle. It's quiet approaching the crossover. Uh, and on Lee's Town Road through the construction zone, no trouble just yet. Same deal on Versailles Road at the Circle. Ways map showing an overall picture of the city, and we're good on the right. In. Live drivers reporting a smooth ride on the circle and on Man of War. 
Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don. Thank you so much. And don't forget that Officer Don and Deanne are out there on your radio on 98 One The Bull when you get in your car and tune in. They're always up to something. They are. <laughs> you know, they're sneaky, right? <laughs> Enough said, right? <laughs> Wednesday morning, it's hump day, everybody, and the first day of fall. And we have a lot more news coming up on WKYT this morning. Pope Francis is marking his first full day on American soil, beginning with a formal visit to the White House. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington with that story coming up. And the most talked about man in the presidential race sits down with the most talked about man in late night comedy. That's ahead this morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. So nice to have you along as we get the fall season off and rolling. Yep. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is September 23rd. Wednesday morning, hump day. And now at 6.30, what a Kentucky high school is doing after learning that a teenager injured in a Labor Day crash has now died. A man broke into a home and came face to face with the owner armed with a gun. And a Kentucky rocker is opening a restaurant in his hometown. Pretty good start to the morning, much better than the past couple of mornings where we were pretty chilly, but now sitting there pretty mild in some spots. 60 degrees now. London Corbin area in Jackson. Today's forecast lower 80s. Still pleasant though. And as we track off into the next couple of days, we are looking for some rain. I'll get into that forecast in just about 10 minutes. All right, and here's the latest from WKYT News. Well, grief counselors will be at a Kentucky high school today. A Lincoln County teenager injured weeks ago in a crash has died. Ricardo Nunez and several friends crashed in Tennessee back on Labor Day. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at Lincoln County High School this morning with more information on what's happening there. Mark? Good morning, Bill. This is the ending that no one wanted here for two and a half weeks. Friends and family of this senior here at the Lincoln County High mm. School have been praying for him, hoping that he could recover. Well, the school is saying now that he has died, it is a very difficult time for everyone here. But there's also been an incredible amount of support coming in from the community. I want you now to take a look at this photo. Leanne Ranner posted it to a Facebook page for Ricardo Nunez last night, and it gives you an idea of just how much the community loved this teen. The picture shows middle school basketball players from Lincoln County and West Jessamine joining hands to pray for Nunez before a game. Now, the support has not stopped there. There is a benefit concert scheduled for the Lincoln County football player next month. And an online fundraising effort started by the Church of the Nazarene here in Stanford has raised more than $1,600 for his family. Police say that the athlete was hurt after he was thrown from a car during a Labor Day crash on I-640 on I in Knoxville. We're told that he died yesterday afternoon. The school is now asking the community to continue supporting and praying for the Nunez family. Now their school is bringing in a crisis response team today so that those who knew the senior and are grieving his death today, they will have the support that they need as well as grief counselors. Live in Lincoln County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, a community in Montgomery County is also rallying around a teenager who was seriously hurt in a crash. 16-year-old Aaron Williams crashed this weekend in Bath County. Last night, hundreds gathered for a prayer vigil at the Montgomery County High School football field. His family says Aaron is starting to show signs of progress. We had some bad news. Everybody stopped and prayed. The next thing we know, we got good news. He gave a thumbs up. Well, later today, Aaron's friends will be selling T-shirts with his baseball number on them. They say donations will go to Aaron's family. On Friday, there will be a benefit dinner for the family at Jefferson Community Park. Well, we're learning some more information this morning about a man suspected of committing two violent crimes in just a matter of days. Lexington police arrested Adam Duff yesterday. They say he set a house on fire last week and then shot a man during a weekend robbery. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is live in Lexington, where Duff is set to face a judge later today. Good morning, Michelle. Yeah, Adam Duff will be in court today on several charges, including arson, robbery, and attempt of murder. Now, that arson charge stems from an incident this past Friday when Duff was accused of setting a home on Leestown Road on fire. Court documents say that Duff knew Stephanie, the caregiver of Clarence Woodrum, who owns the home. Documents say that Stephanie and Duff were arguing when she ran upstairs and locked herself in a bedroom with wheelchair bound Woodrum. Duff tried to kick the door down before yelling that he was going to set the house on fire. A few moments later, he did just that. Stephanie says that she jumped from the balcony and waved down several people who were able to help Woodrum escape his burning home. 
Stephanie had emotional words for Duff. I just want to say that if he does see this, that he needs to get some help. And I can't understand why you would do that. And when you did what you did to this house and to that man and me, he didn't just tear, burn the house down. He's, he's split up a, a, a family and come change to that too. And he, he needs some help. Not only was Woodrum's home destroyed in the fire, but two dogs were killed. Fortunately, five other dogs were rescued from the fire. Now, the robbery charge against Duff is from this past Sunday. According to court documents, Duff shot and robbed a man on Warfield Place during a poker game. Police say Duff was at the home for a drug deal. The victim was shot in the leg, and police say Duff stole money from his wallet. Now, Duff will be arraigned on these charges later today. He was also on parole during all of this. He was convicted of robbing a bank back in 2009. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, Michelle, thank you. 635 now on WKYT this morning, and a Kentucky man turned the tables on an intruder who broke into his home. 75 year old Robert Hamm was taking a nap in his Carter County home when he suddenly heard a loud noise. When he went to investigate, he found a man ransacking the place. Hamm says he was thankful that he had his rifle handy at the time. I just laid the gun down on him and told him I'd blow him in two if he moved. I said, Come in here. And I made him lay down here in the middle of the floor. I was wanting to shoot him real bad. I really, I really wanted to shoot him. Ham says he has known the suspect, Larry Thompson, for years. And this wasn't the first time that he's been in trouble with the law. Thompson's sister says Lee has recently been living in Richmond. New this morning, a Lexington man is in jail accused in a bizarre crime. Jacob Adkins is charged with burglary. Police say that he let himself into his ex-girlfriend's apartment and took apart her bed. He then stole the bed frame, and police say he left a note behind that said, quote, When I'm with you, I feel alive. Adkins will be arraigned today. It's only been a couple of days, but safety is apparently already becoming a concern on a stretch of New Circle, or I should say a new stretch of a Lexington Road, that is. This one's Citation. Lexington police say there have already been five crashes at Citation in Greendale since Monday. A crash there last night sent a woman to the hospital. Right now, there's just a stop sign at that intersection. Because Greendale is a state road, it is the state's decision whether or not to put a light at the intersection. Hundreds of Fort Campbell soldiers who have been in Afghanistan are expected back at their Kentucky post this week. Fort Campbell says about 250 soldiers are due to return early Friday. They were in Afghanistan advising the Afghan National Army. A ceremony with family, friends, and fellow soldiers is scheduled. Well, in less than six weeks, voters will be going to the polls in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and electing a new leader. Tonight, you can hear from their running mates. WKYT and WLKY in Louisville have teamed up with Midway University and the League of Women Voters for a lieutenant governor's debate. Democrat Sandy Overly and Republican Janine Hampton will be facing off tonight. Now, we'll be streaming tonight's debate live on WKYT.com. That starts at 7. And you can also catch it on television. That will be at 10 o'clock tonight on the CW Lexington. Again, 10 tonight on the CW Lexington for the lieutenant governor's debate. The candidates for governor will be squaring off again next month from the EKU Center for the Arts. And we will be broadcasting that League of Women Voters debate on October 25th. And look forward to being part of that. I look forward to seeing the folks at Midway University tonight being on the panel up there this evening. Well, the State Board of Education is expected to name a new education commissioner this week. The Courier Journal is reporting it likely will be Stu Stephen Pruitt. The other finalist, Christopher Cook, dropped out of the race. The board will hold a special meeting this afternoon in Frankfurt. It's expected they will vote on hiring Pruitt and make him an offer. Right now, Pruitt serves as senior vice president for a nonpartisan education reform organization. Well, a member of a Louisville rock band is going to try his hand at the restaurant business. Patrick Hallahan is the drummer for My Morning Jacket. He and two partners are opening Butchertown Grocery in the Derby City. The casual dining restaurant will have a cocktail lounge with live music set to open in November. My Morning Jacket released their seventh studio album, The Waterfall, earlier this year. And Bill, I don't know about you, but I love to get the little samples at Costco. 
There you go. That's, you know, a lot of folks <laughs> love that. It's our favorite yeah. part. And uh, revitalizing over there, a butcher town, a, a famous uh, part yeah. of Louisville. Yeah. So. Well, this story is about, you know, basically a food fight oh, that was prompted the by the, yes. yeah, the sampling. Yeah. <laughs> they, police say this dispute happened over free food. You'd guessed it at a California Costco. A 78 year old man told officers that he was reaching for a Nutella waffle at a sample table when a 24 year old man suddenly grabbed the remaining samples. Prosecutors say the victim told the young man that he shouldn't take so many samples. That's when police say the suspect punched the elderly man in the face. It's a shame that it had to come to this over, you know, a uh, uh, Nutella sample. The 24-year-old pleaded not guilty to assault charges. The elderly victim was treated for a cut to his head. Well, that's a shame. Wow. That that all went down like that, isn't it? What is the world coming to? You. you know, come on. Lucky it wasn't the guy from uh, Carter County. It's up there. just a Costco sample. <laughs> that kid could have learned some lessons from that man. <laughs> right. He should have just listened. 6:40 now, 20 before 7 on WKYT this morning. Let's check to see how traffic is moving this morning. And here's Officer Don with our check on live drive traffic ahead of the morning rush. Good morning. Good morning. Police are running radar in a couple of places this morning to let you know about. On Paris Pike near the Fayette Bourbon County line. You want to be careful there. And on Sir Barton, if you're cutting across from Winchester Road over to Man of War, uh, extra caution, watch your speed in those areas. Let's get a look outside right now and we'll show you what to expect. There are no wrecks in the way. And the stalled car that we were dealing with on Tate's Creek Road, the Lansdowne Shops, was just cleared. Live look at Broadway and High Street where traffic's moving okay on our Waze map. Get an overall picture of what's happening on the interstate. 75 coming in from. Uh, uh, from Madison County, across that Clays Ferry Bridge looks great. So does 64 if you're coming in uh, from Clark County or even from Winchester. So that's good news. And the south side of Lexington, no major slowdowns yet. That's approaching Nicholasville and Man of War, Tate's Creek in the Circle, Richmond in the Circle, all look good. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you very much. And as you rise and shine, it is the first day of fall. We officially got into the season at 421 this morning. So you can rush out and get your, <laughs> you know, cinnamon swirl, harvest time, pumpkin latte yeah, thing. There you go. It's a Nice time of the year. Well, the job market certainly has plenty of ups and downs, but one company is giving a completely different spin on finding a job. We'll show you how they took the job interview process to new heights. And we're looking across the way, another nice start to the day. Great start to fall, but then we're looking over towards your weekend, and here comes a system from the Atlantic. It's a little weird how it's moving, but I'll show you that detail in just a few minutes.